Hi, I'm Lynn Robinson. Welcome to Body Sculpture, the second Special K Pilates exercise video. In this body sculpture video, we've combined the two exercise disciplines of Pilates and yoga. And I'm very pleased to welcome Howard Napper, who's going to come and help teach me some yoga. Howard, what I've found so exciting about working on this project is that though we both recognize there are differences between Pilates and yoga, it's been really exciting discovering there are similarities yeah. as well. Joseph Pilates actually studied yoga for a while, and a lot of Pilates exercises have a basis in yoga. Yes. I always think there's only two ways to work, no matter what you're doing. You either work intelligently or you work unintelligently. And I think Pilates and yoga give you the opportunity to really understand what the body's doing. Work intelligently, and that's the main focus of what I want to try and do with my work and what we're trying to do here on the video. Yes, yeah, so it's really working on that mind-body connection and taking that thinking person's approach to the way you move. Yes, mind. yes, it can be very simple. Keep it very straightforward and just, as I say, listen to the body in that way and try and work with the intelligence of the body. Not overdoing anything, not forcing anything. Just working very softly, very gently. Both disciplines focus as well on the importance of correct breathing, alignment, and working from this strong center, this so strong core. Yes, it has a lot to do with this core, this center, as you say, the spine. Everything that moves away from the spine, the alignment, breath, is obviously all connected. You can't separate one from the other. I mean, no matter what you're doing, if you're doing Pilates or you're doing yoga. So, you know, we're working with the same tools here, which is our body. So we just have to be aware of that always. I'm really looking forward to discovering more about yoga and to having you teach me. And I hope too that you all enjoy discovering that unique combination of Pilates, yoga and Special K. Because I think with those three, you're going to discover a new body. Before we start the Special K program, it is essential that you master our breathing, alignment and centering. You may have seen this on the first Special K video, but even if you did, take time out to refresh your memory. We're going to be referring to the relaxation position in the program. And for that, you want to have your feet hip to shoulder width apart and in parallel. Relaxing back down, you always need to exercise on a mat. Have a firm flat pillow behind your head. And we're going to be referring in the exercises to the neutral position of your pelvis and your spine. And that means we don't want your pelvis to be too tucked, nor do we want it to be too arched. Ideally, you want to have these two prominent parts of your pelvic bone in the same plane, on the same line as your pubic bone. That's your neutral pelvis position. And when your pelvis is in the right position, it helps for your spine to maintain its natural curves. So you should have a nice natural curve in your back here. It shouldn't be flat down into the floor or overarched. When you've found your neutral pelvic position, we now need to move on to look at your breathing. So if you'd like to place your hands onto your lower rib cage, the idea is that you breathe wide and full into your sides and into your back. So nice wide breaths. Expand in the rib cage to the side and as you breathe out, the ribs close down and together and your breastbone softens. So nice wide breaths, expand in the rib cage wide and full. And breathing out and the rib cage relaxes. And finally, you need to learn how to isolate your deep stabilizing muscles. They're going to help protect your lumbar spine while you're moving. And to do that, you need to maintain your neutral pelvic and spinal position. Take a wide breath into your sides. As you breathe out, draw up the muscles of your pelvic floor as if you're preventing the flow of water and gently hollow and scoop your lower abdominals back towards your spine. It's a nice gentle action that stays low and breathe in and just let the muscles relax. And as you breathe out, draw up the muscles of the pelvic floor and gently hollow and scoop your lower abdominals back towards your spine. You want to be working these muscles at less than 30%. Breathe in and release. Making sure as you do this, your pelvis stays in neutral. You're not going to be moving or tucking the pelvis at all. Wide breath in. As you breathe out, zip up and hollow from the pelvic floor. Spine stays still, pelvis stays still. And then keeping this muscle engaged still, you're going to continue to breathe wide and full. And that creates the strong center from which we're going to work. 
ultimately we're going to be developing a whole girdle of strength around your middle. Now that you've learned how to stabilize your lumbar spine, we want to work on your pelvic stability. So you need to be able to maintain this scoop and hollow with the pelvis in neutral as you move your limbs. So wide breath into your sides, breathing out, zipping up and hollowing. Try sliding one leg away along the mat without allowing the pelvis to move. It stays quite still. Breathe in, breathe out, and slide the leg back. Wide breath in, breathing out, zipping, hollowing, slide the other leg away. Don't let your pelvis move. Breathe in, stay zipped and hollowed. As you breathe out, slide the leg back. In a similar way, you want to be able to keep the pelvis still as the knee opens to the side or as the knee folds up. You always maintain this nice neutral pelvic and spinal position. So we're going to start this workout with standing correctly. So you want your feet hip width apart and parallel, weight evenly balanced on both feet. Nice soft knees, released thighs, your pelvis in neutral, just gently zipping and hollowing. Make sure your waist is nice and long, your breastbone soft, shoulder blades down into your back. And imagine someone's pulling you up from the top of your head, just to lengthen up through the spine. We're going to circle the shoulders. So nice and slowly, still lengthening up through the top of the head. You're going to take your shoulders back, making the movement really deep into the shoulder blades. A bit like a massage. And then bringing the shoulders down into your back. We're going to work now on the feet, the ankles and the calves. So just bring your feet in a little closer. Place your hands here on your pelvis. You want a nice long waist throughout, gently zipping and hollowing, lengthening up through the top of your head. You're going to come up onto your toes and then drop one heel down and bring the other knee directly over the center of your foot. And then we're going to change, bringing the other knee forward and gently coming up and down. The pelvis stays quite still, lengthening up through the spine. Very good for your circulation, this one. And you'll feel it right through your legs and in your feet as well. So just making sure as well that your weight is evenly balanced, that you're not rolling your feet in or out or your ankles in or out. So we'll start by doing some very simple yoga exercises to start off with, yeah? To begin, let's just come into what's called a child position. So sitting back on the heels, extend the arms out in front. Have the hands about shoulder distance apart. Open out the palms of the hands, middle finger pointing forward. And then tuck the toes underneath the heels, okay? So we're gonna come up, we're gonna lift the, hip, the knees off the mat, take the heels down, towards the mat, so the heels drop towards the floor and the sit bones come up towards the ceiling. That's good, okay. So if you relax the ankle, then the heel can drop, opening out the back of the knee, good. And then from there, broadening across the front of the hips, and the sit bones move up towards the corner of the room. Back of the waist opens up and the rib cage moves away from the hips, great. Just soften the shoulders, let the, the shoulder blades move back and down the spine towards the back of the waist, good. And then the chin tucks in, just opening out the back of the neck. Great, good. And then holding it there until you start to feel that the body starts to create tension and you're holding yourself up through tension rather than through openness. And then gently coming down. That's a lovely stretch for the calves. Yes, really nice. opens out the back of the yeah. legs. But you don't want to overextend the back of the knee. No. So that's why you want to drop the heel down. Yeah. To let the, the back of the, the leg the open up. Back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. It, as soon as you start putting the, pushing the back of the knee towards the wall behind you, yeah. you're going to overextend it, and then you're going to have problems with your knees. Great. Great. And then come down and rest in a child position. Actually, this time, bring the hands back behind 
towards the feet, palms up. Great. Then come forward from there. Come forward onto the elbows. And have the elbows shoulder distance apart. Hands forward, open out the palms of the hands once again, middle finger pointing forward. The knees underneath the hips, hip distance apart. Okay? Yeah. So the front that. of the chest comes down towards the mat. We're bending the center of the back of the yeah. Of oh, the spine. that's really nice that's between good. the shoulder blades. So, yeah, keep the shoulder blades soft. And, and my head. And the head's in a neutral position, so you're looking down in between the forearms into the center of the mat. Good. So it's just a gentle movement in the back. We're working the dorsal spine here. Yeah, that's lovely. Rather than the, than the lower back. So there's just a gentle movement softening along either side of the spine, the muscles that, that work either side of the spine. Because that's where everyone gets really tight between the Ex shoulder blades. Exactly, and what happens here is obviously to open up here, then we can start to move down into the lower back. Yeah. We have to open up this part of the back yeah. first as well. So this is just a very easy way of opening up the center of the back. Good. And then from there, you can rest back once again in a child position, which will also extend the vertebrae the other direction this time. The perfect curl up. Have your feet hip width apart and parallel. Checking, as always, that your pelvis is in neutral. And it's very important for this exercise that your pelvis stays in neutral throughout. Don't let the pelvis tuck or shorten. Don't tilt it up towards the north. You need to keep the length in the pelvis for the whole time or the wrong muscles are going to work. Take one hand and place it behind your head. And just take a moment to allow your body to completely relax. If you have a neck injury or if you suffer from osteoporosis, you might want to leave this exercise out. You're going to breathe in wide and full to prepare. As you breathe out, just gently tuck your chin in as if you're holding that ripe peach. Do your zip on hollow and then very slowly soften the breastbone as you curl up, making certain that your tummy does not pop up. It must stay hollow. And then slowly breathe in as you curl back down again. We'll change hands, using this hand to check that you're staying in neutral, you're not shortening the front of the body. Breathe in to prepare, breathe out. Tuck the chin in, engage the shoulder blades down into the back, do your zip on hollow, and slowly curl up, just checking all the time that your tummy stays hollow, and then slowly breathing in as you come back. When you've mastered doing that, we can make it a little bit harder by taking both hands behind your head. And this next exercise is a great preparation for doing the 100. You're going to breathe in to prepare as you breathe out. Zip up and hollow, stay in neutral, soften the breastbone, shoulder blades down as you curl up. Then breathe in and bring one hand down by your side, engaging the shoulder blades down into your back. And breathe out, stay zipped and hollowed. Breathe in, breathe out, and slowly lower back down again. Breathe in to prepare. Breathe out, zip and hollow, soften the breastbone, shoulder blades down in your back, chin tucked in. Breathe in, reaching past your thigh, breathe out, shoulder blades down. Breathe in, breathe out, and slowly curl back down again. is a classical Pilates exercise and I'm going to show you the beginner's version right the way through to the advanced version. So don't move on to the next level until you're strong enough. Again, if you've got neck injuries or osteoporosis, you need to avoid this exercise. We're going to start with the breathing. So place your hands onto your lower rib cage and remind yourself of breathing wide and full. Into your sides and into your back. And then see if you can breathe in for a count of five and breathing out for a count of five. And just checking that your pelvis is in neutral. We're now going to add an arm movement. You're gonna beat your hands to a count of five, breathing in for five, breathing out for five. Setting the shoulder blades down in the back and making sure that your upper body stays soft and open. Zipping and hollowing now, you're gonna bring the knees up one at a time, reaching through your fingers, Breathing in for five, breathing out for five, staying zipped and hollowed. 
Then if you're strong enough, you're going to soften your breastbone, tuck your chin in, and then come up to look between your legs, again, reaching away with your fingers, breathing in for five and out for five. Make sure your tummy stays hollow. And then for the full advanced version, you slowly straighten your legs. Again, breathing in for five, out for five. It's called the 100 because you do 100 beats. And then coming back down, bend your knees, lower your head, zipping and hollowing, return your feet to the floor one at a time. Come forward and lay on, on the mat. That's a, good. Have the hands about a foot in front of the head. Place them again shoulder distance apart, middle finger pointing forward, open out the palms of the hands. And then from there, just coming up with the chest and shoulders. Good. Elbows are off the mat. That's it, good. So an extension away. You may want to bring the hands a little bit further forward. You may find you might want, might want to bring them a little fur, bit further back. But basically, the abdomen stays on the mat. Yeah. And the, the base of the ribs, so the last rib is just touching the edge of the mat. Yeah. And again, it's a movement, it's a, it's a, um, a back bend in the middle of the back. What am so, I doing with my buttocks? Are they meant to be relaxed? Are soft. soft, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're softening everything along the length of the spine. Yeah. It's just a lift. And again, the shoulder blades move back and down, down towards the waist. And my abdomen? Great. Is the abdomen remains soft, soft and the hips remain soft as well. Right. Good. If you tuck the toes underneath the heels and then lift the knees and the thighs, you get a little bit more extension into the lower back. Right. Okay, let's go. So to start off, we will work the center of the back. And then by lifting the, the knees and the thighs, we start to, lead, to move in towards the, the lumbar spine. Keep the shoulders soft and away from the ears, and the buttocks soft in the back of the waistline. Good. Great. And then gently come down. Good. Bring the hands back underneath the chest. Push back into the resting position, back into the child. Bring the hands alongside, palms up towards the ceiling. Good. So releasing the shoulders, releasing the back, the middle back and the lower back. Take a couple of breaths, an inhalation and an exhalation. Just soften the abdomen and let it move back towards the spine. Good. And then bring the hands in front of the knees. Tuck the toes underneath the heels. Gently push back into a very soft squat. Good, and from there, let the heels go down, open out the back of the knees, let the shoulders soften. Good, and then bend the knees and roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, come up into standing. Good. We're going to work the upper arms now, but we're going to combine it with a pillow squeeze. So take your cushion, place it between your knees, check that you're in neutral, Breathe in wide and full, breathe out, zip and hollow, and gently squeeze the cushion. Now you're going to keep squeezing the cushion throughout the exercise, all the while we're working the upper arms. Just check that you don't lose your neutral. Then take your weight, and you're going to bring your arm so that it's directly above your shoulder. Your wrist is straight, and you're going to steady your upper arm with the other hand. And then you're going to breathe in as you lower, and breathe out as you straighten the arm. And in as you lower, and out as you straighten. All the while, you're gently squeezing your cushion, zipping and hollowing, lifting from the pelvic floor. But your ribs are calm, your shoulders are down, your neck is soft and released. Breathing in as you lower, and out as you straighten. And then on the other side, again, Steady your hand, and then again, raising as you breathe out, gently squeezing the cushion, in as you lower, out as you straighten. It's great for flabby arms, this. Just gently tones the back of the arms. Again, just remembering to zip and hollow. slowly bring in the arm down. So we come up into standing. Feet placed hip distance apart. 
good. Open out the soles of the foot from the center. So broadening and lengthening the foot as well. We want to create a good foundation. So with the, with the weight evenly balanced over both feet, just transfer the weight onto the right foot. Okay. And then you can lift the heel of the left foot gently and very slowly bring the, knee, the, the foot up and place the left foot above the right knee. Now, if you concentrate on the ball of the big toe and the heel, and then perhaps fix your gaze on the wall in front of you or on the floor, that will help you with your balance. Also concentrate on the area of your, just below the navel, just the center of the body. If you're able to, to just fix your attention on that as well, you can just clasp hold of the wrist gently. And then just bring the knee back towards the wall behind you, open out across the front of the hips. Good, inhaling and exhaling, don't forget to breathe. So we're just gonna transfer the weight. If we really transfer the weight slowly, then the roots can go down through the soles of the feet. Good, so that was great. Onto the left foot, gently bring up the right heel, transfer the weight and bring the foot above the knee. Let the arms float up. Good. Bring the right knee this time back towards the wall behind you, broadening across the front of the hips. Chin's tucked in slightly. You can look towards the horizon. Good. Just clasping hold of the wrist. So we're trying to work with the ball of the big toe and the heel, allowing the weight to go down through the foot. And we become rooted. And then gently release the foot. Come back into standing. Great. Good. Phew. How was that? That was fine. Yeah. Not easy when that on happens, camera. when you, no, exactly. <laughs> I'm but glad when you that happens, the talking, well, it's good. <laughs> but when that happens, we get a sense of a real sense of yeah, grounding there. Yeah. So we're, sense we're of working. Peace too, which yeah, is really exactly. nice. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let's just do a very gentle and simple spinal twist. You bring the right hand and place it on the top of the chest, and then bring the left hand back behind, just placing it into the small of the back. Yeah. Just there. Okay. So we're going to soften in the area of the back hand. We're literally. If we start to soften along the length of the spine, then we can start to rotate it. So we're not looking for a big movement here. We only want to create quite a deep, gentle twist. So as we inhale, and then on an exhalation, softening back along the length of the spine as you start to rotate to the left. And do I keep my pelvis square keep the, forward? Exactly, yeah. keep the hips forward. And That's it, great. So we're not coming up from the feet. We're, we're twisting from the center of the back. Good, there's a rotation as the, the spine softens. Good, and then inhaling and coming back to center. So we're not looking for a big movement no. there because the skeletal, musculoskeletal structure will probably go a little bit further, but internally the organs don't need to stretch that far. No. So we're just working on a very soft opening yeah. there. And then we can come into the other side. So the left hand on the top of the chest, just lightly touching, right hand back into the center of the waist, and then inhalation and exhalation, then coming around to the left-hand side. Work with the breath. As you exhale, find a softening along the length of the spine, and you can gently start to rotate. As you say, the hips are facing forward. So if you're feeling it in your ankles, you're coming around from the ankles, you want to be coming around from the center, from the middle of the waist, or the back of the waist. Keep the shoulders soft, and the chin tucks in slightly. Good, you can look towards the horizon. Good and then come back to center and release the hand. How was that? That was great. All it was right. really good. Well, we converted yes. you. Uh, oh, well, I didn't know about that. <laughs> no. You're getting there. You're getting there. A bit more than that, yeah. right. Good, yeah. well done. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Howard. Our last exercise is called the chalk circle, and you're going to need another pillow for underneath your head. If you have a shoulder injury, you might prefer to do arm openings again. We did those in the first workout. So again, your alignment is crucial. You want a lot of pillows under your head. A bed pillow is perfect. Line your back up with the edge of your mat. Your knees are at a right angle, all the bones lined up. And then you're going to have your palms together. Now, just imagine you've got a piece of chalk in your top hand. You're going to draw a circle on the floor, but your knees are going to stay together. So this is going to really open up the upper body. So just breathe normally to start with, and you're going to reach across your other hand with your piece of chalk, 
and then slowly you're going to draw a circle, keeping the knees together. So don't worry if your hand doesn't touch the floor. Bring in your arm back. Your head just rolls with you. You're gently zipped and hollowed. Your pelvis stays square. So again, a lovely big circle. You'll find it gets easier each time. Because it's a rotation of the spine, again, if you have a disc injury, you need just to take some advice. But this has to be the best feel-good exercise there is. And then coming onto your back before we turn over. And then once again, lining your back up with the edge of your mat, and rearranging the pillow under your head so your neck is comfortable. Nice straight back, knees at a right angle. They're going to stay together. Palms together, just gently zipped and hollowed. You're going to reach past your underneath hand. Take your piece of chalk. Let your head roll with you. You might find one side's easier than the other. Staying gently zipped and hollowed. Keeping the neck nice and long. And then finally, coming back into the relaxation position. Congratulations, you've completed the Body Sculpture Programme and with the unique combination of Pilates, Yoga and Special K, you can now discover a new body. For more information on Body Control Pilates products, workshops and holidays, log on to www.bodycontrol.co.uk.